Today's high-profile visit from U.S. Secretary Blinken comes as President Zelensky of Ukraine says 16 people were killed in a missile attack in a market city of Kostanitikov. And as he warned, the death toll could increase. It's another reminder the war in Ukraine is showing no signs of slowing down. Joining me now to talk more about this, former Ambassador Daniel Baer. He's also the Senior VP for Policy Research and Director of the Europe Program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. And his new book, The Four Tests, What It Will Take to Keep America Strong and Good, is available September 19th. Ambassador, thank you for being with us. Talk first about the significance of the Secretary of State's visit to Kyiv right now. I think it's very significant. Obviously, Secretary Blinken is there for practical purposes to announce continued support to Ukraine. But this is a moment in which, uh, obviously, the political statement that the secretary's visit makes, going demonstrating solidarity with Zelensky as the counteroffensive continues, and obviously um, the terrible tragedy of 16 people being 16 civilians being killed in another uh, Russian attack today. Uh, I think it will. It will reassure people in Kyiv that, uh, and around the country that Ukraine remains on the minds of partners around the world who recognize that this ongoing Russian invasion is, attack, is an attack in violation of international law on innocent people. Right. 16 more lives uh, lost in this latest attack. A billion dollars in additional funding. There is quite a bit of debate going back and forth, Ambassador, about the progress of the Ukrainian counteroffensive right now. How would you assess um, their efforts right now in pushing Russian forces back? I think the efforts of the Ukrainian military remain valiant and extraordinarily effective, more effective than most people thought they could be, certainly 19 months ago. And they continue to be effective given really difficult trench warfare conditions on the battlefield. I think that uh, the assessment of most military analysts is that uh, it's hard to see either side breaking through in a way on the battlefield right now in terms of the front lines uh, in eastern Ukraine in a way that um, is dramatic or in, you know, one day or one week completely changes the terms. They are they are in an attrit of uh, a war of attrition right now, um, which is why I'm deeply concerned that uh, as the pressure rises on Vladimir Putin, because we should remember that uh, this is not an existential war, not just for Ukraine, but also increasingly for the Putin regime, that he will take more actions like attacking innocent civilians in, in the market as he did today. All right, the free world is watching. You've mentioned before, Ambassador, that you believe Putin is likely to switch up his strategy as we're entering the fall and even the winter months again. How do you see that playing forward? Yeah, I think for as long as I can remember, time has really been a co-conspirator for, for Putin. He has played for time repeatedly in his foreign policy and succeeded often in allowing the attentions of the West or others to uh, to wane and then making his move. In this case, I think Putin is under increasing time pressure. Uh, you mentioned in, in the previous segment that he's having trouble mustering the military uh, force that he needs. He's having to raise the age limit for the draft, obviously the Wagner Group's um, rebellion and that episode exposed cracks in his regime, but also uh, creates manpower problems. He's having trouble keeping the front lines equipped. Um, and so he increasingly feels the pressure of time. And I'm worried that in a moment like that, because he recognizes that this fight is existential for him, it was a chosen fight, it was an unforced strategic error on his part, but it has now become existential for him, that he's going to get more desperate. And as he gets more desperate, he will get even more cruel and sadistic, hard as that may be to imagine, given how cruel and sadistic this war has been thus far. And so I expect more attacks on civilians, more attacks on civilian infrastructure, et cetera. And I think that Ukraine and Ukraine's partners need to be prepared to respond to that forcefully and to up the pressure on Vladimir Putin and tighten the screws on him. Yeah, and speaking of the pressure on him, uh, between the death of Prigozhin and the failed mutiny and some key military heads being arrested, you have to wonder if he's becoming more paranoid about his inner circle and who he can trust. Yes, I mean, the, all the reports, it, it's notoriously difficult to get a sense of what's going on in Putin's mind, but all the reports that we can get um, suggest that he is becoming even more isolated, even more paranoid in his own system, which is frightening because uh, he is the leader of a nuclear power and has enormous capacity to do damage in the world. And one never wants somebody like that to be completely isolated from facts and analysis and advice. Um, but yes, I, I think it is, it is clear that he is um, not in a... Um, what we would call a rational frame of mind, and that makes it more dangerous. But we need to continue to uh, make clear that there will be additional consequences 
if he continues to uh, increase the consequences on the, the innocent Ukrainian people. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.